everybody, this is Jono from Seneca and today in this A-level psychology revision episode I'm going to be breaking down long-term memory and hopefully this episode will soon feature in your long-term memory and be a useful resource for your exam preparation. So let's dive in without any further ado. Long-term memory can be split into implicit and explicit memory. And these can be split further into episodic and semantic for explicit and procedural for implicit. So long-term memory divided into two types. Do you remember what they are? It's explicit and implicit. Understanding the different types is important because a person's age or particular types of brain trauma or disorders can leave certain types of long-term memory intact while having disastrous consequences for other types. Explicit memory. Those are the ones we consciously try to remember and recall. For example, if you're studying for your chemistry exam, the material you are learning will be a part of your explicit memory. Sometimes, but not always, the terms explicit memory and declarative memory are used interchangeably. Implicit memory. Implicit memories are memories that are not part of our consciousness. They are memories formed from behaviours. Implicit memory is also called non-declarative memory. <laughs> memory. <laughs> so explicit memories are those we consciously remember and recall. And ep- explicit memory can be split further into episodic and semantic. So to summarise, long-term memory can be explicit or implicit. Explicit can be episodic memory or semantic memory. And implicit memory is procedural procedural memory. So what is procedural memory? This is a type of implicit memory that stores the knowledge of how to perform actions. Procedural memory is a type of implicit memory. It stores information about how to do things and there is no conscious recall of procedural memory. For example, the it's the memory for skilled actions such as how to swim front crawl. If you're learning how to swim front crawl, you practice the stroke, how to move your arms, how to turn your head to alternate breathing from side to side and how to kick your legs. You practice this many times until you become good at it. Once you learn how to swim front crawl and your body knows how to move through the water, you will never forget how to do it, even if you do not swim for a couple of decades. So this is a really good example of procedural memory. So, can you tell me three key facts about procedural memory? It's a form of long-term memory, it's a form of implicit memory, and it requires no conscious recall. Those are the three things that are really important to take away about procedural memory. So, what kind of memory does psychology revision come under? That's explicit. So that's explicit memory. So that's what hopefully this revision episode will be helping you out with. It'll be helping out you out with your explicit or declarative memory. Because this is the type of memory that is associated with the storage of facts and knowledge that we have personally experienced and can consciously recall. So declarative memory has to do with the storage of facts and events we personally experienced. Explicit memory has two parts, semantic and episodic. Semantic memory means having to do with language and knowledge about language. Stored in our semantic memory is knowledge about words, concepts, and language-based knowledge and facts. For example, answers to the following questions are stored in your semantic memory. Who is the first president of the United States? What is democracy? And what is the longest river in the world? All of those would be stored in your semantic memory. Episodic memory is information about events we have personally experienced. The concept of episodic memory was first proposed about 40 years ago. Currently, scientists believe that episodic memory is memory about happenings in particular places at particular times. The what, where, when of an event, if you will. It involves recollection recollection of visual memory as well as the feelings of familiarity. So, can you remember three true statements of explicit memory? How many types are there? There are two types of explicit memory, semantic and episodic. It's got another name, can you remember it? It's also known as declarative memory because it's things you can declare or speak. And does it require your conscience? Yes, it requires conscious recall. So those are three things to take away about explicit memory. So do you remember what procedural memory is? 
So that is, it is a type of long-term memory. It's an implicit memory, but that's the one that doesn't require any conscious recall. So procedural memory, no conscious recall, whereas episodic and semantic memory do require conscious recall because they are part of explicit memory. So that brings us to the end of this revision episode. I hope it was useful. I hope it's going to nicely transfer into your long-term memory. Make sure you check out the other episodes in this uh, series. We're going to be talking about the multi-store model of memory, duration studies, capacity studies, all sorts of fun stuff to get you up to speed and fighting fits for your A-level exam. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you in the next episode.